the Dim Din Podcast, a safe space to talk about misconceptions, perceptions, assumptions, and frustrations. Join us for conversations and stories that explore how embracing our differences leads to a balanced, strong, and harmonious world. Hello and welcome to season two of the Dim Din Podcast, your very safe space to have conversations about misconceptions and assumptions, perceptions, and frustrations amongst diasporans here in the diaspora. I am your host, Becca, um, a.k.a. The Serenadian. We're back with a lot of conversations, and season one was focused on misconception or reality. Now, season two, we're going to talk a lot about the frustrations that we experience here in the diaspora and what we can do as a team to sort of try and resolve those um, frustrations as much as possible. I have with me two amazing guests today, and we're going through Rhonda to Sierra Leone, and I'm going to pass it over to them to introduce themselves before we introduce the topic of the day. Over to you, Salima Tu. Thank you, Patricia, for having me here today. So my name is Salima Tu, thank you, Jafar. I um, immigrated to Canada 19 years ago, so I came here with my little brother. My mom was already here. Um, I worked in the area of disability and risk management that mainly revolves around workplace-related injuries and illnesses. And I have a soon-to-be nine-year-old daughter, so I'm excited to be here today, and thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thanks for being here. Okay, over to you, Joy. My name is Joy Uhigisha, and uh, I was born in Uganda. Uganda is a neighboring country to Rwanda. So the reason why I was born there is because my parents had moved to Uganda because of the civil turmoil that was happening in Rwanda. Uh, 10 years, 11 years after I was born, we moved back to Rwanda after the genocide, uh, where I studied my high school to university and then moved here to Canada 15 years ago. I um, professionally, I'm a mental health psychotherapist. Uh, I also teach part-time at um, Norquist College uh, as a side gig, I run my non-for-profit, Family Life and Beyond, it's called. And the mission and vision of that non-for-profit is to empower individuals to be their best versions through counseling services and through um, workshops and conferences just to normalize conversations around mental health. Uh, when I'm not working, I'm a full-time Uber driver of my three amazing children, <laughs> children <laughs> that I love so much, but sometimes dri drive me so crazy. <laughs> it's such a beautiful chaos. Uh, I love to travel. Uh, I enjoy keeping fit, physically fit. Uh, so I like to exercise and I like to eat and sleep. <laughs> yes, I am so the glad. The full package. Yes, <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. I'm excited. Thank you for having us. We're happy Becca, to have you here. Yes. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for coming. Well, you talked about um, children yeah. and having three. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful segue to our mm -hmm. topic of the day. Because mm -hmm. uh, we are starting off this season with children being raised here in the diaspora mm -hmm. and being raised in our different countries mm -hmm. in Africa. Mm -hmm. I'm sure all three of us were raised in our different countries in Africa mm -hmm. and you came when you were just before uh, 18 right so you have a bit of a perspective of, of what it's like to be raised in Sierra Leone mm -hmm. and that continuing here in the yeah, diaspora right. um, and I think the topic of raising children is so important because it's literally the roots of most things right the way you are able to contribute to society the sense of self you're able to gain, and just how, how grounded you feel as an individual in general. Mm -hmm. Highly, from my perspective, I think is highly dependent on how you were you raised, were raised yeah. as a child, right? So we're here today to talk about being raised in the diaspora. Okay. Mm -hmm. We, season one, we like, we had our mothers came in and talked about their experience of raising children in mm -hmm. the diaspora. We had fathers came in and talked about their experience of raising children in the diaspora. 
So you are coming in with that perspective of the child, mm -hmm. right. and you are coming in with the perspective of the professional because mm -hmm. you work with yeah. children and families, and families. as well. Yes. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So starting with you, <laughs> what would you say is your experience of like being raised in Sierra Leone where we had one culture, one way, everybody is familiar with the ways of knowing and being, and migrating to Canada and that style sort of like continuing, like what was that experience like for you? Um, I think for me it was a bit a shocker because okay. back home, um, I was lucky and I had the privilege to be raised by my grandparents. Like I met my great great grandparents from my dad's side. Mm -hmm. So there's that village there where, and I was never lacked the motherly or fatherly figure in my life because there's like uncles who like my dad's, um, my dad um, brothers and then my cousins who are who are like um, older than me and my other cousins who I'm younger than. So I had that opportunity and that privilege to be um, a older sister and a younger sister, even though some of them were not just like my blood cousin, were um, blood siblings, where we're from the same mom and dad. But just because that village was there, I um, I have my grandparents, my aunties, and then my other cousins were all living in one. So it was um, it was it was good because I had that family mm -hmm. setting where I do even though I'll miss my parents, but not as much as were here in Canada when you are. Um, when I'm raising my child, I feel like sometimes that my child is all, like she's alone, even though she has cousin, but she is just, um, an, cause she's the only child for now, but she doesn't have that experience that I had. And I think um, that's what I always wanted for her. I wish she could ha have that experience where she is able to like, um, be around her cousin or her gra grandparents and just have that atmosphere. Mm -hmm. There is like a pro and cons that comes with that as well, right? Because being raised back home, not having your parent around as well could also affect you as a child. It's shaped the way you navigate the world as you um, become an adult, right? Absolutely. Like it doesn't matter how, um, how much love and affection those people try to like pour into you, mm -hmm. but there's always that sense of emptiness mm -hmm. and you feel that abandonment like, but there's a, there's a question, there's why. Why was I raised by these people? Why not my actual parent? Mm -hmm. So you have that in you, you are like, um, you always want an answer, but then the answer you would get is that, um, well, due to certain circumstances or situation, this is what was best for you. Mm -hmm. But then now having my own child, when I try, like, when I try to like, um, think and try to put myself in my parents' shoes, I'll be like, oh, I think I would have been, I would just raise my child. Like, but then it best because probably the way, the way I am right now, my parents cannot. And I think that's the sacrifices they made for me to be able to be the parent that I am today. Ooh. Right. So there's some benefits that in came out of it in the long term. It is, yeah. Okay. Because I was able to be in my full presence. I was able to be present in my child. Like I know the things that I would need to pick about some of the way I was raised, the values that were um, bestowed upon me that I would put, I would continue to like, continue with that with um, the way I raised my child. There's some I'll be like, no. Because um, when you are raised in that village, there's so many opinions, so many mm -hmm. people. Like the decision making is just you. It 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 is like one, but you get to experience a different kind of like how other people show affection, mm -hmm. how other people like in terms of discipline as well. How other people would discipline you. Mm -hmm. Like you may have like I would say my grandpa was very lenient to me, but then probably my grandma may not act that way. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as a kid, you tend to like try to navigate about all this, um, this adult around who are responsible for your day to day mm -hmm. upbringing and try to see who well can I, um, who, who is like, who, who can I really um, trust? Trust. Yeah, who has my best Who has my best interest, who sacrifices more. Yeah. But then again, I always had, and then with that, you tend to be a people pleaser. That's the downside as mm -hmm. well, because you want to please all these people around you. And sometimes you don't even have a choice, do you? You don't, <laughs> right? That's the thing, right? You don't, but because they have been there, yes. and they have taken up on this, some of them took up this responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's not by choice. Yeah, yes. Because they had to do what they had to do at that time. Mm -hmm. But it's like pretty much just force on them. Like this is one thing I like when I was um, 
uh, with my grandparents, excuse me, my voice is just breaking up here. I always um, know that. I'm like, okay, they're not my parent. They are my grandparent mm -hmm. for the fact that they like they are here to look after me and my aunties. I was very thankful. So I'm like, okay, what I'll do, like probably what the way I'll be when my if I was raised by my parent mm -hmm. is totally different because I'm like I do not want to cause them any more cares anymore, like put any more stress or any more weight on their table because they're doing pretty much. I see it as a favor because. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's something that I would come back to because I would like to learn a little bit more about if there was some any self-blame there for you as a child. But before we come to that joy, mm -hmm. you see a lot of different things come through mm -hmm. your door yes. as a professional who works in this area. Mm -hmm. Do you, like, when you hear this topic and, you, and being a part of this conversation, mm -hmm. can you speak to the relevance? of this conversation in our day and age, like mm -hmm. now? Why mm -hmm. is this an important conversation okay. to have now? Um, I think parenting in, in and of itself is quite ghetto. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard to be a parent. And a, a lot of times, most parents, me inclusive, we just go through the motions of parenting. We don't quite understand uh, why we do the things that we do, why we speak to ourselves and to our children the way we do, why we show up or why we don't show up, you know, why we feel or experience things the way we experience them. Mm -hmm. um, so having a conversation such as this at this moment is quite timely and it, it will always be timely, but I think, like I said, it's, we, go we just go through the motion. So by having these conversations, we are creating awareness we are normalizing, you know, conversations uh, around, you know, what this exactly means to the parents and to, to the ch children and the adults that at one point were children. Mm -hmm. I, I think being intentional as a parent can potentially, uh, can potentially define the trajectory of a child and how they're going to turn out. Right. Mm -hmm. So we cannot afford even though that's what really happens. But I wish I could speak louder to every parent, you know, to just emphasize how crucial and important it is to be intentional about, mm. you know, cre about um, showing up right. and relating with our children because it really, really does affect us as adults. Research has shown that the adults that we eventually become is primarily influenced by our childhood experiences and those first mm. relationships that we built mm -hmm. as children. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I answered your question. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. Mm. And in talking about that, mm. I'm going to pick on you one more time before yeah. I come to Salima to hear. Mm. But I'm thinking as you are talking about mm. that um, trajectory mm. and we also, um, like being in Canada, mm. I see there's so many influences Yes. So many parenting styles, because these mm -hmm. are people from like all over the world, yes. right? Mm -hmm. um, and especially with the system that's in place in Canada, mm -hmm. it does not necessarily know mm -hmm. some of our own ways of knowing okay. and, and ways of doing, yes. or even to understand it, like, yeah, yeah. like the professionals that are in place to support mm -hmm. yes. these parents and these children. Mm -hmm. Do you see any challenges with regards to parents from the different parts of La um, Africa mm. learning or understanding mm -hmm. how to parent in the diaspora? Yes. So there's so many factors mm -hmm. that play out in personality development of a, of a child or even of all of us, of an individual. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the relationship the relationships we develop with our parents is, is one of them, but it's the biggest. And when I say parent, it could be a parental figure, it could be a caregiver, but that parental figure, a parent or a parental figure, because not everybody has the chance and the privilege to have a biological parent raise them. Uh, so, but on top of the, that relationship or the interaction or the attachments that we develop with our parents, there's the cultural pieces which I think is what you're trying to speak to. Mm -hmm. So there's the cultural pieces, th there's the temperament, you know, just the way we were born. You, everybody has a, a, a natural innate temperament of how they show up. So there's the biological piece, there is the culture, mm -hmm. the cultural ex experiences and influences, 
there is even the childbirth order. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, uh, th there is no child that is born within the exactly same environment, even twins. Wow. Mm -hmm. So the, I am I'm the firstborn, the oldest of six children, wow. but I'm 100% sure that the circumstances my parents had me, uh, the circumstances that surrounded my birth were very different from the circumstances my last, my youngest sibling, uh, that surrounded my young, youngest sibling uh, wow. birth, yes. Wow. So that's, that just goes to show that there is so many, it's, there's an array of factors that will contribute to, uh, to who we eventually become. Mm -hmm. Now speaking to, uh, speaking to how parents, so some of the factors and how the system here could be quite different, you're right. Because for example, we come from a collective culture. Right whereby like just how my sister here just shared, mm -hmm. it, it's almost a whole village trying to raise a raise child. You. Mm -hmm. Your neighbor grew up in Africa, in Rwanda and Uganda where you know, your next neighbor will spank you or will even give you a side eye if you, There's you know, wrong, yeah. misbehave or whatever. Yeah. Whereas here to each your own, very individualistic. So those two cultures could clash. Th there is and it happens a lot, a lot. I see. Right. Yes. Yeah. There is pros and cons to which. Absolutely. There is amazing stuff about the collective culture. Mm -hmm. There is also amazing stuff about the individualistic. Mm -hmm. So what I think what becomes a challenge then for parents like such as us and everybody is that sometimes it's very hard to synchronize those two or to draw from each and pick out, you know, what is going to work for my family. Because yeah. li literally everybody's different. And, and you are uh, what you know, right? Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So there's the challenges then that I experienced. And if you're able to um, find that balance between yes. the two, then Navigate. you're able to do wonders. Absolutely. In mm -hmm. a sense, or at least parenting becomes a lot more manageable. Easier. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, coming back to you, Salima, too, um, you had talked about being raised by your grandparents and sometimes having those thoughts about why, why was I not, why mom and dad, right? Right. I was not raised by my biological mother as well, so I can, I can relate mm -hmm. to those thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. um, as a child... Was there any point where you felt like it was your fault? I would say so. Okay. Because um, I think, because um, I, I think for me the main thing is I never had, I never was given the, any explanation mm. Mm, of so why to, uh, I was um, with my grandparents and then seeing all these other kids, of like, and they were all like your friends, they're all with their own biological parent, especially when it was like school event and all that, they all show up and I'll be like, what did I do? And you know what, that, um, that, um, the impact on that on me was, um, I had to ground myself because I wanted to do so much good that so my parents can hear it and then they're like, oh, she's doing good, you know, like yeah. she's like, she's a well um, behaved child. So I wanted them to be proud of me even though they're not around due to certain circumstances. But I, growing up as an adult, I felt like I become a people pleaser because I don't want to say no, I don't want to act in a certain way because if I do, then um, I don't, um, if I do, then I'm my parent, they might call my parent and I'll be like, oh, well, they never raised you well. And I don't want that to come back to my mm -hmm. grandparent because I'm like, they've done so much, they've taken, caring for me mm -hmm. so like I'm like if I did anything wrong right now it's gonna reflect back mm -hmm. on them that they were the one who raised me mm -hmm. and then they did not do such a good job right so I try hard not to be um, like kind of like a I was like a bad troublemaker, <laughs> troublemaker yeah. <laughs> so everything was like okay yeah yeah but even though I was a very quiet like kid growing up mm -hmm. I was but it was always that question there why like, because I needed Absolutely. answer. Absolutely. I wanted answer. Like, I was totally okay with whatever situation it was, but just give me an answer, like, why this was done. And I think when I grew up as an adult, when I started here, um, putting some of the pieces together, and and then just think about the situation where my mom was and my dad, and I was, and I forgave them, right? And But then I was like, 
I don't know what I would have done if I was in their own same shoes. So I, um, yeah. And that um, influenced the way I parent my child because I'm like, thank God I'm like within at a place where I had a child when I know I can take care of her. So I'm more present. I'm there, I'm trying to like be the primary um, individual in her life to help her navigate this wall mm -hmm. as a primary um, guardian, right? Mm -hmm. So I felt like because I had to sac that sacrifices I have to like, based on my sacrifice, but my parents sacrifice the thing that I had to go through. That's why my child is able to have this now. Mm -hmm. And the uh, emotional connection, the bonding is everything. Because what I have with my child right now, I've never had it with my mom. So with that, it heals all of those child wounds that does the, the, the inner child in me. Absolutely. I like that. And I'm coming back to that to dive a little bit deeper on that. Mm -hmm. If you're just joining us, this is season two of the Dim Dim podcast. And this is your very first um, episode. We're talking today about the importance of raising your child so that they can become who they are meant to be in this world and contribute to society in a valuable way. Mm -hmm. I've got my two guests here with me today and the conversation is going exactly mm -hmm. the way it should go. So coming back to that question or your response about um, you feeling like you got to a point where the inner child in you has been healed, I know that um, coincidentally, we are all firstborns, oh, right. so I think that's yes. something that we can all <laughs> relate <laughs> to. We probably would have some stories mm -hmm. to tell about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But in you being raised to that point where you felt like, because from what I hear you say, it almost sounds like you were looking to gain your parents' favor at some acceptance, point. Acceptance, yeah. Right, like that acceptance, if only I do the right things, if only I, I stay away from trouble then maybe, just maybe, they'll come they'll get show. me, right? Um, I think that also puts us in a place where we feel like we, af we have to be strong at all times, right. right? Now, growing into an adult, being where you are right now, do you see that strength showing up too much or too little in some areas of your life? Like, has that influenced you positively or in any kind of way right now? that you would change your kid? I think, um, the, the, yeah, because the, the strength, that strength part, yes, mm -hmm. because you have to develop that self-strength. Mm -hmm. It does, there's some positivity towards it, and there's a lot of negativity. Okay, okay. The positivity is like, um, you are able to handle any situation that comes your way. You're resilient. You're resi yes. Yeah, you will get up and then keep going. It doesn't matter what is being thrown at you. You're like, oh, okay. I'll, you wipe your, your own tears once, you, because you wiped it as a child. I've wiped my own tears several times, like so many times. And then now as an adult, I'm like, okay, I can do it. I'm like, I, I'm a very religious person. I'm like, God, you're there. Allah, you're there. You know what I'm going through. You've been, you've been, um, been with me all this while. So I can get through it. But when you are going, some th going through something really, really tough and extreme, People, your family have always used to see you as, the, as you're strong. Mm -hmm. They don't know when you go inside your, whatever, in your house mm -hmm. and then you close the door. Mm -hmm. They have no idea what you're going through. They don't know the amount of tears that you will shed on your pillow. They don't know the days you just sit in the bathtub, just have the shower pouring all over you because mm -hmm. you, you do not have, you felt that you don't have the, um, you don't want to put more burden on them. You don't want to tell them tell either because that would make you look weak. Not even weak, but then you tend to like felt you kind of like, okay, how would they, like, would they get hurt? Because I think we for us as them. a forced child, like mm -hmm. we, are, we felt like we do not want to like disappoint our parents. So we take a lot of stuff in and we just try to manage it. But... Are we really strong? There's like some days I'll just say, I'm like, I'm not strong. Like, and, and the word strong, I think it, like, it, at some point, it used to just be something I don't even want to listen to because I went through some major changes in my life um, in the next, like, last uh, five years ago. Mm -hmm. It was like, every, like, people, like, when people will see me and if they're like, oh, you're very strong, I'm like, no, I'm not. I don't want to be I'm strong. I'm not, I don't want to be strong. <laughs> like, I'm yeah. not strong. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm like, that's one thing I'm not. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. that I've already, I all, I'm, I'm like, good at managing mm -hmm. 
because this is what I, I was um, given, pretty much the, situa the situation that I was. I had no other choice but to just be resilient, just um, get up and start going. Like It doesn't matter how many times I fall, I have to get up and then be get like, back get back up. Mm -hmm. But am I strong? No, even being a single parent right now, raising my child, mm -hmm. no, I'm not strong, but like, do I have a choice? No. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I'm not taking, I'm not taking with me when it comes to my daughter. No, no, no. I allow her to show a vulnerable side. She can cry all she wants, even if there's something going on and then she started crying. I'm like, when you're done, let me know. I told, I tried to teach her that. Sh um, showing your vulnerable side, your emotion is not a weakness. Ah, uh, it's in fact strength, in, if it you is. ask me. Yeah, mm -hmm. because for you to be able to come out and pour it, I'm like, just those tears that you pour can actually be like a relief. You're relieving, like a re re release of stress. You, you can relieve something. They're there for a reason. Right. So they're there for a reason. Use mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So I, will, I never will tell you that. Oh, you have to know. That, that vocabulary doesn't have a place in my own dictionary. Uh, uh, no. There's no such thing as strong. Okay. Okay. So although at the time that was a tool for you to get through that phase right. in your life, you are also learning that this does not have to be that consistent no. go-to. There's no. other things that I can learn in my own best interest. Right. And I'll bring that to you, Joy. Mm -hmm. um, talking about attachment styles, mm -hmm. like between parents and children. Mm -hmm. I know this is something that is discussed in your profession. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is and mm -hmm. the different types mm -hmm. that are there? If mm -hmm. at all. Yes. Before I delve into that, uh, just listening to your story, I really truly want to empathize um, because um, I can only imagine what it means to be raised by people that are not your own parents and then you do not have an explanation as to why. Mm -hmm. And yet your parents are actually there, but nobody ever sat you down and, you know just explained. So that just goes to show how in some of our cultures a child is not valued. Mm. Right? Because and I think that is done subconsciously. There's no yeah. bad intention behind it. They think they're but protecting you to Absolutely, some right. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but the three deepest need of any child growing up is to feel seen, to feel heard, and to feel valued. Seen, heard, and, and valued. valued. Yeah. To know without a shadow of a doubt that I truly matter. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And if there is any gift that we can ever give to our children is to just be emotionally present, to give them, them those gifts of, I know you, I, I, I understand how important this is, I am going to explain this, this, I'm going to break it down for you. Right. Because they deserve to know. They do, yeah. They're human beings as much as we are. Mm -hmm. Right, so if we look at our kids as the little human beings that will eventually be adults, then I think the way we view them and how we treat them could potentially shift. Right. Now speaking about attachment styles, um, I mean, in the most simple form of what that means is basically attachments just means the way we interact and the way we show up in different relationships. Now, the, the reason why attachment style is, is, a, is a thing now, it's, it's a scientific theory, is because research has shown that the way we attach to our caregivers, our parents or parental figures, in those first phases of our lives will define, will influence the way we show up in our, whether it's intimate relationships, whether it's relationships at work, whether it's friendships, whether it's anything. Mm -hmm. right. right. So it's, 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 it's a big deal. Uh, a lot of times we don't know, like I said previously, we don't understand why we show up the way we show up because nobody has ever sat us down to explain right. these things, right? But if you've been to therapy or, or if you read self-help books, the word attachment going to show up somehow. Mm -hmm. um, so there is four uh, patterns or uh, styles, attachment styles, uh, which the first one, so the, there is two categories, the secure and insecure. Okay. So the secure 
attachment mm -hmm. is the ideal one, which most of us uh, have. do not have. <laughs> 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 but the good news is uh -huh. that we can actually unlearn some of these right. ways. Like she, I think she has been mentioning how she has done so much work within unlearn herself. Right. So we can unlearn these things and learn new ways or much more helpful ways of doing life. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that is the good news, right? So the secure attachment style is where you really feel safe and secure with your parental figure or with your parent, mm -hmm. uh, where you feel supported, you feel seen, you feel heard, you feel valued, you feel like your voice is, is being heard, really, like how you feel and your experiences matter as much as your parents. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, the second one, the, the other part is the insecure attachments. And in, in the insecure attachments, there's three categories, which is the anxious, ambivalent attachments, the avoidant, and the disorganized. Mm. So again, the anxious is where, uh, the anxious and ambivalent is where the child will, for example, if the parent, whether a mother or a father or parental figure, leaves, like goes, like say for example, I left my kids home and I came to shoot a video, um, it, they almost feel un anxious and there's that anxious se separation anxiety. Mm -hmm. But then when the parents comes back, um, you know, they're not as welcoming, they're not as, yeah. Whereas with the secure attachments, yes, the kid will feel like, okay, mom, you're going, mm -hmm. but then when they come back, you know, they will yeah, hug yeah, and then they will go back to do right. their business because they feel secure. They know that even though my caregiver is stepped out, we ha they're going to come back and I'll be safe. Mm -hmm. They don't mm. feel abandoned. They don't feel abandoned. Mm -hmm. Avoidant is where the parent seems to be emotionally distraught, angry, upset all the time. And so the child learns how to avoid, to right. feel certain things to have emotions because they know when they feel or when they show their experiences, emotional experiences, they're either going to be shunned or, or they're not validated, validated right. or yeah. they're going to be shamed mm -hmm. or they're going to be just ignored, yeah, outrightly just ignored. Stop crying, uh -huh, exactly. Right. So now this child who later turns into an, an adult will start to, you know, uh, avoid emotional situation uh-huh yeah, they don't talk yeah so those adults tend to be n narcissists they lack empathy <laughs> <laughs> they, they lack empathy is like wait yeah. a second <laughs> they, they, they don't you know they don't they 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 only see they, they can't see beyond themselves and all that mm -hmm. the last one is the disorganized mm -hmm. whereby there's so much fear uh so the child is confused they don't know what to expect because it's quite chaotic at home, world is unpredictable. Right. Uh -huh, very unpredictable, so it's quite d disorganized, so today it's going to be anxious, the next day it's going to be avoidant, it's just confusing, mm. yeah, so those are the four, just briefly, because we don't have so much time to go deep in, into them, mm -hmm. uh, but those are the four uh, attachment styles, and there is a free online attachment quiz that you can take, Okay. so yeah. each one of us somehow will have an attachment style mm -hmm. or no like out of those four you either gonna identify yourself or know somebody who you know has a different attachment style mm -hmm. so you can go online google attachment style quiz it's free of charge and just get a sense just create awareness for yourself right. and then start to learn how this the way you attach sometimes we attract certain people and you don't know why do i get drawn to mm. to this type of Person. yes that mm -hmm. that's again because of those early childhood experiences that that you had and that's that's the it's almost like a template mm -hmm. there's yeah. a subconscious Talking about that trajectory uh -huh, right. there's a subconscious template mm -hmm. that your parent or your caregiver gave to you subconsciously so that's what that's the template you go using subconsciously right. yes uh. but when you know now that some of these things if you're anxious or avoidant when you know these things, then you start to work on yourself. Then you even identify those th those moments when they're happening, those trigger points when they're happening, and just do the healing. Wow. Mm -hmm. So what I hear you say then, mm -hmm. and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. is that 
the way we are parented as well will have a huge influence in the relationships we have, oh, yes. how able we are to manage those relationships, and even in our professional settings, right? Because right. mm -hmm. who you are, um, you knowing that, like having a good sense of self would also help. Mm -hmm. I know um, recently there was a conversation where I said, um, being raised the way that I was raised, my like, like I have a really good connection with my father, mm -hmm. where I feel like I am able to voice mm -hmm. my thoughts and my opinions matter. I feel hard, I feel seen. Yes. So in that situation, I feel like it doesn't matter what room I go into, mm -hmm. who is in that room, mm -hmm. I'm able to take up space because right. I feel visible. Like yes. I feel like I belong here and I don't limit myself for anybody necessarily, mm -hmm. where I feel like some of our relatives and friends mm -hmm. back in the different parts of Africa mm -hmm. are raised to be dominant. Play small. Right. In a sense. Shrink. Mm -hmm. Right? Like just shrink because it's mm -hmm. like you're a child. You're mm -hmm. not supposed to have a voice. You're mm -hmm. a child. You're not mm -hmm. supposed to say anything. Mm -hmm. And by the time you grow into that adult mm -hmm. who has heard oh. so much of what you're not supposed to, what you're not supposed to, mm -hmm. you don't even know what you are supposed to mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. Right? And coming to you, mm -hmm. um, Salima, too, having gone through some of that, having learned from your experience, and I know you've spoken a little bit to how you are parenting right um, now, are there things that you can pull from the way you are parented to guide your parenting style? And what did you choose to not take from that, um, from the way you are parented? to add to your parenting style? Okay. Like, how did you make that decision? Um, the way I made that decision, because um, I tend to reflect back okay. how I was as a child, where just like what she mentioned about being seen, heard, and then valued. valued. Mm -hmm. So in my own, like where I was raised, pretty much like the atmosphere, like the culture was, you are only there, you only just exist. It doesn't matter if, let's say, if you had a misunderstanding with an adult. For the fact they're an adult, that's you're it. You're wrong. Yeah. The right <laughs> is automatically given to that adult despite whatever the situation was. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. And when you try to say something, you get shut down. Like, you're being rude. You're being disrespectful. Yeah. You are just argumentative and you're not. That's not what you were told, right? So... Um, the one thing I would take from it is like, I always talked about my grandpa. Mm -hmm. My grandpa always say that it doesn't matter how small a child is, mm -hmm. that child should be respected. You, mm -hmm. the adult, should give that Thank child you, grandpa. The respect Bless him. first <laughs> before you expect it. Ooh. Right. Because yeah. Cause respect begets respect. Right. Ooh. This is what he always say, okay, if I'm around my, my friend, Mm -hmm. And then my auntie comes and then just talk to me in any way or form, like call, like go out, but they go off on me. Mm -hmm. Because I want to prove to my friends that mm -hmm. I'm also somebody, I'm going to respond back to her. Right. Mm, in a disrespectful way, maybe. Right, because why? I'm within my, my own peers. Like, this is where I feel mm -hmm. like I'm somebody. Mm -hmm. And how dare you come in here telling me all of these things? And then, no, I'm going to fight, but I'm going to be like, no, you can't. Like, say what I have to say. Mm -hmm. But if that auntie came to me and then was very polite in her approach, I'll respond the same yes. way. Uh. Because then you came with a respectful way, and then I, respond I responded that. back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to my daughter, this is how I parented her. Like, I have done a lot of therapies. Okay. okay. I remember when I was married. I Therapy went, people. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> <laughs> and mm -hmm. I remember when I was married, I was going through therapy. When I, I was going through therapy, and I went there for, like, the, my marriage. But then guess what? It was my child who trauma that shows up. Not. Oh, mm. and my child in you. Right, so that it was based, just like how you talked about the attachment, the different attachment styles and everything. Mm -hmm. And it shows why I, I attracted so many other people. And then I used that. I think I remember when I, was the, when I went to go see my therapist, right, I was like explaining the things that I was going through and then after um, realizing what all the childhood trauma and everything. And me having my daughter, I want something opposite for her. Mm -hmm. And I remember my therapist was like, what message are you sending to your child? And that clicked. I was like, wait, 
Ooh. I don't want to conch. I'm like, I have a daughter. What message are you, are you sending, sending to, to your child? child? Oh, I love that. And that clicked. And I was like, oh, because then it's not about it's not even about you no. anymore. There's a little you who is sitting there Ooh. depending on me to be the role model and like the way oh, that gave me the it's like telling her like <laughs> what is acceptable like i'm give like this is how you're supposed to be you're loved setting and the parameter for her <laughs> and that and i went yeah. home that day and that was it for me mm. i'm like i have to make changes i have to and my daughter became a priority like even up to this day when it comes like even at school if i get a ma an email that she has like there's some incident that happened between her and her classmate and stuff like that i will not respond to that email until i hear this, the my daughter's side of the story Ooh. and when i'll hear the my daughter's side of the story if she's give me the reason why certain like she had made such in whatever decision or choice when i'm when i'm replying to the teacher i will make sure i included that there that this is what she said. She, she said, and what led to her doing this. Mm -hmm. Because I know my child, and I'm giving her the, the, the that, platform. that platform for her to be able to express herself, like know that her, she's valued, our opinions matter. Mm -hmm. Like nobody will come in and be like, oh, your child did this, this. And then I just reacted, no. And sometimes when people see my kid out, they're like, oh, your kid doesn't greet. I'm like, well, I'm her so mother. You say hi first. Thank <laughs> you. And and, and I, I, I normally respond. I'm like wow. I'm her mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have nothing. To, I'm like I'm, I'm like. Did you greet her? Mm -hmm. Because even for me, there is people. The perception is that I'm proud. I'm like, but did you ever say hi to me? And then I never said hi back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow. Wow. So you have intentionally switch everything. Chose the things that did not like. Let go of the things that did not work for you. And you're like, right. I am going to raise this child the way. I wish I was raised. It's exactly right. So my, my heart, Beautiful. my heart is smiling right now. Oh. Because the best gift you can give to your child is to go through a healing journey. Mm -hmm. And thank you for doing that for you, of course, primarily, but also for anybody that looks up to you, thank especially you. your daughter. Thank you. Uh, a lot of times we carry so much trauma and we don't realize how that is affecting all these other areas of our lives. Um, and, you know, creating that conscious awareness really turns things around because you cannot give what, what you, you don't, don't have. have. Mm -hmm. So, to so if, if we yeah. are going to, if we're going to break the cycle, mm -hmm. if we want things to look different for the next generation, I will encourage anybody who is watching this mm -hmm. to take a minute, do an introspection, mm -hmm. and just try to understand why things unfold the way they unfold for you. Mm -hmm. Instead of finding who to blame, the next person to blame, just take an introspection. Of course, the way we show up and what we are going through as adults has so much to do with what we've experienced growing up right. and it's unfortunate that you know we've endured all this these struggles even especially given our history the colonialism the slavery is so much right There's uh, so much to be said about that to, one. to right. be said about that mm -hmm. with that said though we understanding our parents stories and why they did things the way they did them does really put things in perspective for us. And then owning that and saying, you know what, there is an, an inner child, a little girl inside of me or a little young man inside of me that is really struggling and needs to feel seen, needs to feel heard, needs to feel validated. Uh, but my even though my parents showed up for me today, right. they're not going to be able to, to reparent that little child. Mm -hmm. So the onus falls on us. On us. Mm -hmm as adults. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now with parents that still have the little ones, we still have that opportunity to influence them, to make a few changes and all that. Mm -hmm. But once they hit a certain age, then it really becomes extremely hard for them and for us. Right, yeah. right, mm -hmm. right. See, and I'm going to ask you mm -hmm. both to send a one minute message. I know mm -hmm. we're, we're out of time here. Okay. Um, and by the way, sh um, shout out to the Punjabi community. <laughs> 
<laughs> one of your brothers really helped me in securing this beautiful set. Mm. And I promised him that I was going to give a shout out mm. to the Puja B community mm. from India. Nice. Um, mm. Okay, to round this up, mm. um, taking a minute mm. from each and from each one of you, mm. can you send a message to the system here in Canada? Like, mm. what would you say to them um, that we need as parents, mm. as immigrants, as a professional? What do they need to know to be able to better um, collaborate and oh. work hand in hand with parents instead of parents in, like parents feeling like they are after them half the time? What would you say to the system here in Canada? I think they should um, probably like find ways that they can learn our culture a little bit, like not our culture, like our parenting style. Okay. Because majority of our parent, they're coming from, they just, um, they're coming from um, a place where what their great grammar, gram um, mom, like, the style that they have used. It's what they know. It's what they know. They're only mm -hmm. operating from what they know. So they're not so wanting to abuse necessarily. Right. They just do, do what they know. know. Right. And also there's a saying that you cannot teach your old dog a new trick. Mm -hmm. Some of them are very comfortable where they are. Mm -hmm. I think it's for us that her being through that, mm -hmm. we're the ones who are trying to break the cycle. Absolutely. And um, being, and then also being from, um, back home and then here trying to navigate those two I think they just need to be patient with us and just um, like come into our community learn a little learn bit, a little bit and to us. right yes and see and probably based on that they'll be able to um, know that we are um, we're not trying to abuse our kid or do any harm to them but it's just that we're Africans as well. There are certain values that we cannot compromise in terms of raising our kids. And we should not, Yeah. right? OK, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Over to you, Joy. Hand yeah. in here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think we are part of the system. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to see myself out of the system. Separate from the yeah, system. Yeah, so okay. we are a part of the system. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, the power. We can find the power within ourselves to influence or to drive things where we want them, you know, to, okay. to go. So what I mean by that is that if we are, for example, you're creating this space to create awareness, mm -hmm. you're doing what you have to do. We can be the difference that we want to want see. To see. Yes. Right. So for me, that's how I look at it, because sometimes I look at the system and it's way overwhelming. It's up there. But what can I do as a mother? What can I do as a sister? What can I do as a therapist? Mm -hmm. What change can I, you know, wh what are some of the changes I, I can put in place? Mm -hmm. So creating spaces such as this and maybe the system then, we can go to the system and be like, hey, this is the need and this, we need support. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Yeah. yeah, we need support to accomplish some of these things. So coming together, collaborating, even just amongst ourselves, because I, I find that there is I mean, the black community, the immigrant community is on the rise, which is so beautiful to see. I love it. Right. Uh, but I, I think that if we can collaborate more, put hands together more, and I, th I think we, we can, the impact can be even bigger. Wonderful, yes. wonderful. Right. Thank you, ladies. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. It has been an amazing start mm -hmm. to the season two. Mm -hmm. um, and from what I hear them say then is that the collaboration has to start within mm -hmm. us because yes. we are from different parts of Africa mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So even though we may have um, similar parenting styles, mm -hmm. there are differences. Mm -hmm. So if we learn to understand each other and we work together as a team, mm -hmm. then we can approach the bigger mm -hmm. picture yeah. as a team. As a team. Yeah. Yeah. As a team. Mm -hmm. And with one voice. Stronger. Yeah. Right? right? Mm -hmm. And with a plan, mm -hmm. not just to vent, yes. but to say, yeah. here is the plan is on the how we can work this out mm -hmm. and then we can see things being done in our best interest. Absolutely. Right. Wonderful. Well, we're looking forward to what you have to say about this topic. So use that comment section if you have not subscribed yet. Make sure to do that. And until our next um, episode, Sabe Sandimdim. Oh, okay. Sabe Sandimdim. Sabe Sandimdim.